welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. I'm going to keep talking fast until I trip on my words. Just see how long I keep doing this for. I'm Agora. I ran out of air. <laughs> you stop talking. Uh, meanwhile, I'm trying to think because never before have I thought about a joke I made two days ago and made myself laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good joke, though. Anyhow, last we left off, I believe we had finished exploring this little side area. So next is this way, right up here. Eh? You walk in, and once you get up to the little, like, split beam in the floor there, you're being watched. And you saw the flash I'm being watched from right here. Ah, grr, how did you know I concealed myself beneath this desk? You're sharp. Yes. Behold, for I am the greatest living mystery of a man in all of Hoenn. They call me the Trickmaster. Wahahaha! Glad to meet you. You, you've come to challenge my trick house, haven't you? That's why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Consider your challenge accepted. Enter through the scroll there and let the challenge commence. I shall be waiting in the back. Yeah, so when you walk into Trickmaster's house, you'll have to find him. Then you'll talk to the scroll and go in and you have a challenge. Most of them have some relation to the gems that you've done. If not to the HMs that you gain, most of them, not all of them. So this one, for example, has to do with cut, which we got from the first gym. I think Hex might have just head bashed the door. A cat tried to break him. She's trying to use head, but Aaron was a, was more effective at it. Then absorb hit harder than I expected, honestly. Yeah, same. Not a lot harder, but... I mean, it is four levels higher. Yeah, I'm switching out. And it is, like, the best move Oddish can learn until it evolves. Oddish is higher attack than Onyx. <laughs> I enjoy these facts. I went through a little bit of a, uh... thing yesterday... I paralysis. ...where I read through a bunch of shocking Pokemon stat comparisons. The majority of Pokemon have higher attack than the giant rock snake Onyx. Some of them even have higher health and attack to boot. Mm hmm. I think the most shocking to me was the fact that, uh, what was it, Caterpie or was it Wormpole has higher attack than Onyx and, like, their defense or their uh, health, base health is different by, like, Four. I don't remember for sure, but mm. the, the one that really got me is that Perugly is faster than Latios. Yeah, the Jet Dragon. As compared to the literal Fat Cat. Yeah. Uh, the fact that uh, Persian is faster than Rapidash. Mm -hmm. That was surprising. I guess not too surprising. But the fact that it's not supposed to be like a cheetah Pokemon, it's just a fancy cat. Like it, I don't, I don't know. It's just a soon-to-be Persian rug. Some people might not be as surprised by it. I was pretty surprised. Anyhow, moving on to the next trainer in here, we have a guy with a backwards hat. I was especially surprised since Rapidash is like entire intro in Pokemon was like the fact that it's the fastest Pokemon in Generation 1. I mean, it's name... that turned out to not be true. Its name is literally a portmanteau of Rapid and Dash. Yeah. It is the uh, fiery unicorn whose entire livelihood is based on the fact that they race each other to see which ones are better. Rapidash and this evolved for... <clears throat> Speed and run quick. Yes. <laughs> I love speed and run quick. In fact, I love speed and run quick even more than I like fast man speed do. Uh, the minute jump man becomes a Pokemon. What was... Ah. Uh, there was another one that was great. Absolutely great. Absolutely. Uh, there was the fact that people seemed surprised by the fact that Sylveon 
is faster than, than Steelix. Like, how are you surprised that the fox dog cat rabbit thing? Fox dog cat rabbit loaf of bread is She took offense at being called a loaf of bread again. You are a loaf of bread. You are a cat loaf. Is faster than the literal hunks of metal. And rock. And rock. I mean, one of these is based on something that moves on its own. One of these is... One of these things is not Metal like and the rock. Uh... I mean, Sylveon has ribbons on it just so they can flow in the wind as it runs around. Steelix is... made of metal. Sylveon has an alright design, but... As someone who actually likes the fairy type, I'm not the biggest fan. As someone whose favorite Pokemon is an Eeveelution, I'm still not the biggest fan. As someone who loves the Eeveelutions, and likes fairy type decently okay-ish, uh, I feel like it had an interesting evolution mechanic. I really liked its evolution mechanic. I just wish its stats were more worthwhile. See, Not saying it's bad. It I, has its uses. If I want to use a fairy type, though, I'm going to be using Togekiss or Gardevoir. If I'm going to use a fairy type, I'm probably going to be using Togekiss. And that's coming from someone who doesn't even use Togekiss or fairy types. Looks at your Zacian menacingly. I use him in max raids because, I mean, what else are you supposed to do? Not? That I don't, doesn't make sense. I don't use Zacian in max raids. No, you use Zamazenta. <laughs> yeah, I need to play through Sword to get his Zacian. But you know what? That fits us pretty well. I mean, even in Yu-Gi-Oh, our strategies are usually, unless I'm being stupid, uh, you are the impenetrable shield, and I am the unstoppable attack. You're the cautious sword, and I'm the reckless shield. That is exactly true, and you know it. <laughs> uh, we've been tag partners in Yu-Gi-Oh for years. One of our favorite tags, one of, is uh, me and my boss monster of 3500 attack, who can attack twice and destroys all special summon monsters when she does attack, whether she destroys something or deals damage or not. And is literally indestructible, untargetable, if you attack it, you take damage yourself for doing so. Uh, monster. So what we do is, I cautiously attack, and he switches his indestructible, untargetable monster who deals damage for battling, for battling at all into attack position, it, during which it has a thousand attack, and attacks everything the opponent controls. It's fun dealing 12,000 damage with a monster with 1,000 attack. Yes, it is. Remember back when uh, Seven Sins was such a big monster? Yeah, I feel like we're part of the reason it's not. Between the fact that my monster, you know, gets rid of at least three of its materials a turn. So we have a cat that's being the definition of fishing for attention. Yeah, she's putting her tail through the bottom of the door, waving it around, like she's hoping trying. she gets attention. Hoping she gets a bite. She Thing is, I'm not feeding her, so... Yeah, she heard you walk to the door. She thought you were going to open it. No, nah, I was going to catch her tail and play with it. She ought to know better than to think I would let them in. I don't even know how to work doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be the honest, other neither does she. Not putting her arm through. It's like a wacka cat. That's exactly what this is. You reach over to touch the cat, and then the cat part is gone, but there's another one somewhere else. Catamole. Alright, I'm gonna stop messing with the cat. 
And I'm going to watch this battle unfold while I wait for my turn to fight while I slowly lean into the microphone and talk directly into the microphone at point blank range. Oh yeah. I hope it didn't. That was, that was the point. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm the mother flippin'. Kingy Ames. I have spike. My pants are really tight and I'm sexy. Oh, I'm sexy! I'm gonna stop before we get copyrighted. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have a copyright on his parody videos. You don't know. <laughs> he might. Ah, uh, for anyone wondering, we were referencing the Little Kribo songs that he's done uh, for Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series. They are great. It's fun cutting down trees repeatedly. This is why I decided to become a lumberjack in real life. I'm not a lumberjack. I yeah. don't want to be one either. Cutting down trees isn't fun. I mean, you do lumber, but I don't think you would answer to Jack. You never know, though. Anyway, when you're in the Trickmasters thing, the general goal is that there is a uh, code, which is symbolized by a typewriter, somewhere in the room. Once you find it, you can go through his door. Like so. Then once you talk to him, ah, you made it to me. Hmm, you're sharp. You took me all night to plant all those trees. You're almost my equal in greatness by one, two, three, four, five, six places. Fine, you've earned this reward. Rare candy. Salmon, put it away. And scrub that smug smirk off your face. It. I had to stop because I was shocked that I didn't mess up that uh, phrase. Scrub that smug smirk from your face. Smug smirk is hard to say. Anyhow, <clears throat> it's much too early to think you've won. I'll make new tricks to stump you, I will. You may mock me only when you're done. Come back for the next exciting installment of Dragon Ball Trickmaster. No, I'm good. I mean, the next 12 episodes are going to be him yelling at nothing. and then there's... Of course he's yelling at nothing. You just saw him get sucked into the nothing. He needs out of that nothing. Then usually, if he doesn't have a trick, he'll just be standing there whenever you come into his house. So that's how you know if there's anything to do. Hello, Grandmother. You take the low road. And I'll take the rocky road. I'll take the moral high road. Alright. I have no morals. You know this. <laughs> I have no morale either. Anyhow, now we're going to finally continue on towards the next town. And we'll start by beating a little kid. Savagely. Fiercely. With a bird. Not a bird. Yeah, very much not a bird. I like bird. He's three levels higher and has metal claw. That's good to know. Yeah. Though, to be fair, Gary's, uh... Gyarados. <laughs> Gary's Gary a dose. Gary and his best friend, Gary Dose. <laughs> Not even wrong. Uh, Gary's Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how that one happened. <laughs> Gary is out. Deuces. <laughs> Stop it. Give me some help. Gary's. Okay, I have someone here to help you. His name's Gary. <laughs> Damn it. Gary's Gyarados knows a move it shouldn't at a level it shouldn't even be a Gyarados at. So, you know, Timmy may also be a hackster. Translocating. I might need this later. Taking this very seriously. Anyhow. Hello! 
This trainer with his electrites was very easy to plow through while making random jokes. Now, Please don't mention plowing through a young man. Now that we've finished, though, we're going to do exactly what you expect us to do. We're going to run all the way back to the Pokemon Center before anything else happens. Yeah, we kind of need the... Uh... We're going to want our Pokemon alive for what's next. We're going to need some stuff. Do we want to get some healing items? No, I don't like using them in battle. I mean, between battle, we can... Yes, but that's still money that I don't have to get a shit ton later if I need them. Fair. Do we want to get some Great Balls? Not right now. We still have 35 Pokeballs. Alright. I'm just bringing up the options. Now quick, buy 17 Master Balls with the secret store that doesn't exist. Already did. <clears throat> then I used every single one to catch a magic card. Yes. A single magic card. Using them truly. What? <laughs> Alright. As much as I say we should go for Pokedex completion, I hate Electric. Oh yeah, I'm not going to do Pokedex completion at least immediately. Entire level. We can't escape. Until we switch to it. Oh. It's speed based. And it's only a percentage chance of that. Listen. Shut up. Another Pokemon found on this bridge is Gulpin. Small, it could be useful competitively. This is not competitive time. It's apparently fast enough to give us a problem, too. And has Yawn, so we need to escape now, or Aaron will... Oh, thank goodness. Um... The thing about Swalla is that it's really good competitively, or at least was at the point in time when this game came out. Now, slightly less so, but still not bad. Okay, now for what might possibly be the end of the episode once we're finished with it. The reason I went to heal. <clears throat> May. Hi, Sandman. Long time no see. While I was searching for other Pokemon, my Pokemon went new stronger, so how about a little battle? Zoom um, in with triangles. Pokemon trainer, sorry, PKM and trainer may would like to battle. PKM and trainer may sit on Wingle. Hello, Wingle. Hello, Wayne. So, I don't think Wingle should be too bad for Aaron. If he uses any uh, water guns, it will be pretty annoying. But there's a water gun. Oh, that's like I said, pretty, pretty annoying. annoying. Okay, let's see, for Wingle, I think our best bet's going to be going to go straight for Harvey Face. It's going to suck if we lose Harvey Face this early, though. Oh, absolutely. As you can see, though, her oh, Wingle right. is level 18, just like most of our team. But, Harvey Face gets straight through it. Alright, thank goodness. Mine like an iron trap. Shall we swap him out while we have a free swap so that we... I plan on swapping him. Because now I'm going to be saving him for her starter. Especially since she's now sending out Slugma, the fire type. For anyone wondering why it's a good idea to have a tail on your team, if you pick uh, Mudkip as your starter, or rather, if your opponent doesn't have Mudkip as their starter, their starter's going to be weak to flying. Yeah. So flying is a great type to have as long as they don't have Mudkip. Even still, it's fair to have. Yeah, it's still great, no matter what. Bubble Man will fall asleep at the end of this turn. Shouldn't matter though. Nah, I really shouldn't. Take out the Slugma and... Ooh! Oh, he didn't fall asleep, I guess because the opponent's Pokemon thing first. So our switch comes first, which is nice, because now Harvey Face comes back out and he isn't confused. And we're on her last Pokemon. We've only lost our Aram so far, too. Not to mention... Okay, first of all, Pursuit works better if we're switching out, but, uh... uh not to mention the fact that our starter is primed and ready to go if we need him. Because while, you know, our starter would be weak, it's still something that we can use as the tank starter of this generation. 
That battle went a lot faster than I expected it to, frankly. Honestly, same. Ah, that was another option if it would have survived, which it probably wouldn't have. Kitetsu and his grass or his bug type moves would also be really useful against Robot. I think Leech Life is the only bug move it has though. Is it? I think so. Mm. Regardless. Bug type moves, super effective against grass. Good idea. Issue though is that before I think before Gen 5, bug type was essentially useless in that the moves it got weren't good. Yeah. Yeah, leech life is it. Flash would still be able to lower accuracy. I'm trying to make Kitetsu useful as something other than HMs. Yeah, but I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep Kitetsu on the team or not since we have five Pokemon now and we both still have one that we want. We do need to make sure that Kitetsu doesn't evolve here. Why do you we say that? We need to evolve Kitetsu near Rustboro. Why do you say that? Because I'm pretty sure the only place we can get Shedinja is near Rustboro. It's any time a Ninkata evolves. Oh, I thought it was a specific location. Alright, never mind. Nope. It's as long as you have the open spot and stuff. Alright, we're good. Accuracy. Down. It doesn't affect Bubble Man? I love that Bubble uh, Man, having evolved into Marsh Tomp, is a ground type and thus immune to electric on the bridge full of electric. Yeah. Ah, a duo raring for a double battle beside that hidden item. We'll deal with them after getting to the next time. We'll come back for them. Yep. And we'll get the hidden item when we do. A uh, not so hidden item. We can do this separately as single battles, though, because if you talk to one, it won't trigger a battle with the other. True. Or we can do it as a double. For speed's sake, I think I'm going to do it as a double. There. Saving the other two so we can get some experience for Aaron, who is currently fainted, but... Now, I can't wait until Marsh Tomp learns Earthquake so we can do double battles with Marsh Tomp and Harvey Face. Honestly, it'd be nice if we could get a better Earth move before the next gym. Absolutely. Which is in this town we're about to get to. Absolutely. Uh, remind me, does Levitate? Uh, yes. Hmm. One of its abilities is levitate, and the other is static, I believe. Well, I guess we're going to test our odds, then. Abra using hidden power, which it should not know yet. It's not levitating. Awesome. Alright, but yes, I believe levitate was its basic ability at this point. If not levitate, I'm pretty sure it had... Maybe sturdy, maybe uh, static. I can't remember which one I had. Well, sturdy was worthless in Gen 3 anyway. Yeah, at this point, it only prevented death by one hit K, one hit kill moves, not you know, yeah, we, taking enough damage via one move. Yeah, we covered that in one of the earlier episodes. Yeah, it was a lot less useful. Especially since those moves have incredibly low accuracy anyway, and fail if the user's level is lower than the level of the target. And very few Pokemon ever, you know, can actually learn them. Yeah. And the one that can learn all of them has to have them used on him first. And they can't fail. Or miss. He has to have them actually used on him. Or his teammate, but, you know, he has to survive a one-hit KO move for him to be able to effectively learn the move. Focus items. Yep. If only they weren't hard as balls to get at this point. Anyhow, now we've made it to the next town, Malville City. So what we're going to hey, do... Look, a dude with unique green hair and a unique sprite entirely. So what we're going to do here is we're going to end the episode here. Next time we'll pick up, uh, clean up trainers on the bridge before moving on to a battle against another certain someone. Having said that, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, feel free to hit that subscribe button to follow us for more content. I hope you stay safe and have a wonderful night. You know, I just remembered how annoying the next signature move is. Let's, uh, let's not.